enjoy this video, this topic. One of my subs sent me this, and uh, if I didn't know any better, I would swear he sends me this kind of stuff just to piss me off. And I imagine the audience probably approves of that, because for some reason people like it when I get annoyed. So this one's about Sydney Watson. She's a sort of anti-SJW type, who decided to speak about women voting. You can already see where this is going to go, can't you? Now before I even get into this, I want to show this again. Because everyone thinks the political spectrum looks a bit like this. Hard left, hard right, and this mythical magical zone in the middle. In reality, no. The left is a gradient, and the right is an absolute solid. And as the culture shift keeps growing, you're going to see who's a proper right winger, and who's just some limp and lefty floating in the gradient. Here's the truth. If you're for women's suffrage, you're on the left. You're not a right winger, you're not a conservative, you're not a traditionalist. Giving them the vote was one of the cornerstones of progressivism. So if you favor it, you favor a key pillar of progressivism. And you're not seriously anti-left. Simple as that. Oh, and someone who I want to highlight in the comments section on the Twitter, because I think they're full of shit. Constantine Kissin, who said, when a comment section goes full retard, ha ha, yes, very funny. Listen here, Kissin. You and your co-host got your asses handed to you when you interviewed Pearl Davis on this topic. Go and watch the episode of Trigonometry. She slammed you too, and you had no comeback. You didn't even know women were not in favor of gaining voting rights to begin with. So if I were you, I'd shut the hell up. But anyway, let's see what Sydney had to say. Do you reckon anybody has ever pointed out to the repeal the 19th women shouldn't vote crowd? Okay. Instantly, I can already tell this is uh, this is not going to go down well for you. Just based on the condescending attitude. So let me just explain some things to you, Sydney dear. This has nothing to do with intelligence. Men do not think women are stupid. I mean, some of us do. I mean, some of them do. Some of them do. Anyway, if you're going to be a smart ass about something, you better make sure you're correct. Because if you're not smart, you're just an ass. You know the saying, better to be thought of a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt? Yeah, I got my own version of that. Better to be thought of a smart ass than to talk and show you're just an ass. And the fact that you think this is all because of a woman's intelligence and your analysis is so far off the mark, well, that's just going to give ammo to those of us who do think women are not smart enough to understand this argument. So well done, you're off to a great start. That... When they tell us that we can't vote because we're too angry and we're too emotional and we're not smart enough. Case in point. We're too agreeable and therefore all those things mean that we can't adequately and successfully contribute to political conversation. No, no, you can speak, but it doesn't mean we'll listen or that your opinion holds any value whatsoever. Oh, and also you can't hold any power. And elect a leader because we're just going to get it wrong. Yeah, take it up with history. We're not the ones running on emotion here. Why do you want us raising your kids? <sighs> Remember what I said about not understanding the argument? And if you're confused thinking, did, did she just equate electing a leader with raising children? Yes, yes she did. Do you see now why I said this is giving ammo to those who think they're not smart enough to understand this? If we're not smart enough and we're not capable enough to elect a leader, to have a say in what goes on politically in our countries, why do you want to leave us for the majority of the time to rear your children, many of whom are boys who are going to grow up to do the voting, because of course us women aren't allowed? Apparently the concept of a boy learning from his father is lost on you. This is the kind of argument I expect from a leftist single mother. Why do you want us to be the primary nurturers? Because it's the closest thing you'll be to being useful. You have ovaries and a womb, you give birth. It's almost like it's your biological function when it comes to continuing the species. It's the primary reason why men protect you. To be the people who have the primary amount of influence on your child. They don't stay children forever. Women raise kids, men raise adults. If we have all of these terrible characteristics... Which is why men are the necessary counterbalance. Why would you want us imparting those on your offspring? Because when they've been properly under male influence, they will learn to behave as such, with a sense of duty and responsibility. You know, things that men teach them because evidently modernity doesn't give you those things. That doesn't make a lot of sense. <sighs> your entire argument against women voting was based on a terrible and blindingly obvious false equivalence. If this was your attempt at a rebuttal, all this did was give ammo to the men who think you're not smart enough to engage in a political discussion, and they would be correct for thinking this. Uh, let me explain some things here. Society, civilization, is built by men. 
It is men who build, it is men who create, men who shape its laws, its customs, and its structures, all of which are also maintained and repaired by men. Why? Because they rely on force, and force is exclusively the domain of men. Again, men do not alienate you from these roles because they think you're stupid. It is because they look at those things as a burden of responsibility that should fall solely on the shoulders of the men who are built to carry it. I've used this analogy before. Men are like horses. They are bigger than you, they are stronger than you, they can carry more weight than you. It is their job to carry you. This concept of, oh, I can do those things too, that's politics, it's not real. Men do not care for politics, they care for function. You will never ever be as adequate or as powerful in any domain that is backed by force as a man. That is just reality. Our laws, our traditions and customs are to be defended, primarily against other men, mind you. And you women are not strong enough to defend civilization against a horde of men. Again, this is just reality. I mean, I'm a monarchist. I think voting is cringe and gay. But here's the thing. When men vote, they are primarily driven by self-interest, based around building and keeping civilization stable. They are driven by what makes it easier for me to succeed. They look at voting with a sense of civic responsibility, because men understand their actions have consequences beyond their immediate surroundings. Women do not think this way at all. Women vote based on what I call Amazon wishlist politics, with no concept whatsoever of any civic responsibility because to them, voting is an activity based on a collective identity. Look at women's sports. Look how screwed up that got. Who's in favor of that? Other women. Women can't even galvanize to protect their own spaces for heaven's sakes. Look at America. What is the biggest issue that gets women to the polls? Abortion. What in fuck's name does that have to do with statecraft and how the country should be run? Nothing. But they don't care. And men know that issue is used to emotionally manipulate women and to smuggle in a Trojan horse. We look at that and go, why should you have this power when it is clear you do not care to learn how to wield it with any sense of duty or responsibility? Why should you have any say when all you've done with that power is use it to usher in forces that do nothing but do damage to the social fabric? Why should your selfish desire to feel like you matter come at the expense of everything else around you? Here's a dirty secret. Women effectively have very little agency of their own. Their entire purpose is to give power away. Really think about that for a moment and you will see how true that statement actually is. Objectively speaking, they're like a growth hormone. Anything they give power to grows. They have the, the power of life in that sense. That power always goes into one of three places. Men, bad ideas, or the state. And the further away from their person they give away power, the worse the result will be. Cheers for watching and once again I apologize for nothing.